Action, and welcome to today's rundown. It is Wednesday, September 7th. This is the Barstool Chicago office. Carl, Chief, White Sox, Dave, and Dante. Uh, and today's episode is brought to us by Sport Clips. Chief, you mind taking your hat off for a second, showing the loyal audience just that beautiful flowing head of hair? Do you want to go hat for hat? Yeah, let's do it both. This is a uh, no hat ad read. About four Everybody? hats. Everybody? Four hats off. Do we mind? Do it for Sport Clips. Uh, and we see a whole range from the table. I go in there, just a quick cut, buzz. Dave, obviously. What do you use, a five? Two on the sides for me. I try to do like Blended. a Blended. Really? Shorter the better. When I go to Sport Clips and okay. Sport Clips like, hey, hey, Carl, what do you want? I say, just take it down to the studs. Okay. All right. <laughs> Wait, Dante has got like the little pomodoro. You, you go to Sport Clips, you say, hey, Sport Clips, can you, can you do a little tight on the sides? Let it flow a little bit here. I, I got a big DJ appearance. One on the side, not One blended too high. One, that's, wow. I got to go low. I got, I got fucking grays coming in, man. I can't yeah. let them grow out. But Sport Clips helps you look clean and fresh, even with those grays coming in the side. Yeah. They got some babes work in there, too. Mm. Uh, that's not in the ad copy, but we like to. We like <laughs> yeah, we'll always throw that in there. It's in the commercials. Will you, Dave? Yeah. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and those babes are in charge of the MVP haircut experience, and other people are as well, too. You don't have, have to be a babe. Now we're kind of getting off here. But Sport, <laughs> Sport Clips has added a new signature scent to their MVP that really takes relaxation up a notch. Everybody knows the MVP haircut experience. Like I said, look at Chief. Look at Chief. That's I'm, MVP hair from an MVP experience. Can I tell you something? Mm -hmm. I got a haircut maybe six weeks ago, and I didn't go to Sport Clips. And that was a big mistake because they <sighs> fucking butchered my head, and now I got to grow it out probably for another month and a half so I can just basically press reset, and I won't make that mistake again. I will be at Sport Clip because I know, and they do that whole MVP experience. You want a hot towel? They'll give you a hot towel. I want a hot towel. You, want, you want a little, uh, they got the little massage machine? You, you come out of there, you are pampered. So head over to Sport Clip, get a haircut. We should start doing hot towels for our guests. Uh, Lee Feely, like a champion, look like a gentleman. Sport Clips, the pros in men's hair. Uh, I'm going to raw dog the rest of the episode. Get this head out of here. Uh, big, big slate of topics here, guys. Let's just kick off with U.S. Open tennis. Very passionate people about tennis around the table. Obviously, Dante, you had a big career at JV High School. Uh, Kyrgios, is that correctly? Yep. Loses to Chachinov. Atta boy, Dave. I, I mean, you said an atta boy. Like we know that that's correct. Yeah, I, but I just, off. yeah it's close enough. <laughs> Kyrgios crashes Correction out of the correct. U.S. Open as a Russian Karen uh, Kachachov upsets the Aussie in a late night five set thriller. Uh, Dave, you stayed up late to watch it. Mm -hmm. He threw a tantrum. He broke a couple rackets after the loss. As a passionate tennis guy, do you think he needs to be a better ambassador to the game? No, I think tennis players are, in general, a bunch of fucking pussies. And him showing some emotion after an upset loss, I think tennis needs more of it. This is tennis. This is tennis at its core. The re I feel like tennis has died in my lifetime. I remember when I was a kid, it was Agassi, it was Sampras, uh, Tommy Chang, Peter Chang, something like that. That was like Tommy Chang was the quarterback from Hawaii, I believe. Yeah. Quick release. Something like that. Yeah, it got it out West Coast offense. Run, run, and, run and shoot. Mm -hmm. Anyways, but tennis, because they had the personalities. Back to Mack and Roe, all these guys. Federer and Nadal are awesome, but they're fucking milk toast. So you get this guy who's smashing rackets after a loss. I'm into that. And I will now, I'll, I will never forget that guy's name, even though he's like the 22nd ranked player in the world. So we need a little bit more of that. Tennis needs more of it. I would like it if tennis made a little comeback. But it's, it just doesn't draw me in unless you're doing some antics. So we need personalities in tennis. I'm blown and away. Americans too. I'm blown away by the sexism over there on that end of the table over there. I mean, we just had two of the greatest athletes, not just greatest tennis players of all time, two of the greatest athletes of all time dominate the sport for almost two decades, Serena and Venus. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's yeah. particularly good for tennis. Why? It, it, I would say the same thing about Federer and Nadal. Like it's, this has been like the longest. It's, aren't you bored of those guys? And aren't you bored of Serena? I think like it's, it's like there's no. I, I think it's dramatics like the, anymore. I think it's like the Tiger Woods effect where you're witnessing pure dominance and something you're never going to see again. So I think like it was that great, but like that much greater to appreciate. Tiger, Ta 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 Tiger, no, no, no. Tiger. How many fucking Serena or Venus matches have you watched in the last two decades, start to finish? I mean, I'm we're zero. sitting at the I'll over under it. at a half. I'll answer it for him. It is zero. I love the movie. The movie was good. It was a very good movie. I don't movie. even know what movie you're talking about, which goes <laughs> King to Richard. You. King Richard. Amazing movie. I think it was Oscar nominated. It. That's the Chris Rock slap. Oh, Completely yeah. Completely overshadowed 
the fucking movie that was unbelievable. It was a good movie. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't like Will Smith. and I, That's always been my take. Why don't it's you like, like Will well, Smith? credit to the Williams sisters. I don't believe they ever smashed rackets and threw temper no, tantrums class. and such. Pure class. Because, this guy a, is because a, they're a fucking snooze. This guy is a fucking clown, dude. He's never won shit. He's, he he's so he's not allowed to get pissed off? Dude, he bitches non-fucking stop. He knocked off the number one seed. He finally had a fucking path to win something, and he chokes against this Russian guy. What seed was this Karen, Russian guy? Karen, 27. Yeah, who the fuck has heard of him? I mean, I probably mean, people in tennis. Yeah. Hubs. <laughs> I, I Hubs has heard of him. Yeah, somebody's watched yeah. more than uh, half a... Well, here's my take on it. The U.S. Open is one of those things that just pops up, and then it's like, this is how tennis works for me. It's like, did you hear the semis are going on? That tournament's been going on for fucking weeks. I know. It, uh, yeah, it's, it has, right? And it just like doesn't register. It's like U.S. Open. I'm like, okay, it's, it's not still golf. Going on. Oh, it's tennis. And I know I should be better at this because everybody loves tennis. And tennis is a sport. Come on, nobody loves tennis. Just tail people. Just tail. Yeah. That's the one you see well, people sharp, like, yo, I'm plus 900 units as you're on a tennis. I've been following low-level women's tennis in the fucking Indonesian The league. Polish Open. Well, it used, yeah. to be, it used to be one of the most fixed. I don't know if we can talk about this. It used to be one of the most fixed sports. That's a fact. You can talk in, about facts. Oh, yeah. Tennis yeah. and soccer are most fixed I mean, we're going to talk about that in a moment anyway. Yeah, let's so do soccer. some. Let's, say, let's, uh, let's just jump into that. Players from Brazilian soccer team under, under investigation for fixing a match. I don't know if you guys saw this, but the goalie just lets a goal in <laughs> uh, with, like, a minute left in the game. And and this is to keep their team out of being promoted in the, the next level. Division. Wow. It wasn't just the goalie let it in. The goalie let his own defender with nobody within – nobody was even in the camera shot on the other team just put it in his own net. Yeah, like, it was pretty whoop, funny. Like, whoopsie-daisy. <laughs> uh, should like I have done that? Immediate investigation, and they cut two guys. So it's like, no shit. Like, this is – if this happened in America, like, this is the Black Sox, but, like, they didn't even attempt – to to keep it like on the level. Joe Jackson hit 400 in that World Series and never committed in there. I know we've all seen Field of Dreams. Yeah. So we yeah. all have these like uh, you know lives before Barcelona and stuff. And part mm -hmm. of my life before Barcelona involved doing fraud investigations for a public accounting firm. And so I'd find myself in these like you know thought fucking leadership meetings. I'm like 25 years old, and the partners would be up talking about all the stuff the clients are doing and. You know, I'd be like, I, why am I on them? One of like 600 people on these calls who gives a shit. You're just listening to these updates. And I swear on my life, Brazil came up so much in these conversations. Like, all right, we got to be careful of Brazil. If you've got clients that are doing business in Brazil, I'm like, why do we keep talking about Brazil? It was in those experiences you learn. Apparently, everything in Brazil is just up for fucking grabs. Really? Like, whatever you want to do business wise in Brazil. And they're really? the, are, correct me if I'm wrong. Like are they? They're the powerhouse, right? In South. Like, I, I mean, South as, as, much as, is, as much as there is, as much as there is one, okay. yeah. But like they, they've had all sorts of corruption problems. Presidents, you know, impeached. All you know, all coup de, you know, coup d'état attempts. People can only have electricity. It's like fucked up there. And I remember I had a, I had a friend who they used burned to, the rainforest down on purpose. Yeah, but they're finding cool shit. When they, buy, when they burn it down, like ancient civilizations and stuff. It's kind of cool. Anyways, but they're doing that for agriculture. It's just like a slash and burn thing because it's like anything goes. What, like who cares about the rainforest? We need some cattle to roam. And they can only roam there for like three years. And then the, the soil is just fucked. So they're like, let's raise cattle on this plot for three years and then just like whatever, fuck it. But it is like it is still kind of the Wild West where I had a friend who used to have to go down there for business and they would get they would pick them up in like a – armored suv and the guy sitting in the front would have a machine gun and that would That's just get, get you from the airport to your hotel and then same thing and pick you up at the hotel drive to the office so there are places down there that are very dangerous and this is the type of thing where i think if this guy were like approached and it's like you know what was the? do you guys ever watch narcos i okay. started it, it's good so in that opening opening episode of narcos the guy was like plomo o plata like do you want lead or silver and those are your only options. So I, you know, this guy, I don't even think he should get cut. It was like, look at if I got the money, sure, but if I didn't do what he said, he would have murdered me. So I think you just take the money. Pull and the guy who's going to take his roster spot is just subject to the same level of corruption. Correct. Didn't wasn't there a own goal or s some player blew a game in soccer like this is a couple of years ago, and a bunch of like rabid fans found the guy and decapitated Columbia. him. Like, that Columbia. was that was nineteen ninety four. It was Columbia yeah, in the World Cup well, against the United mind. States. Yeah. There's a great uh, – I think I drafted it in our 30 for 30s draft. The two Escobars. Two Escobars. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hadn't seen that one. Yeah, Cartel yeah. blew his brains out. Yep. Well, he should have played better. 
Um, Brian two, Kelly. Oh, two smut peddlers, real quick. Speaking where do, where does Brazil rank Nitter. as countries for smut peddlers like you guys? <laughs> um, Fair question, guys. The run down. Everybody knows who you. I've are. never been. I've heard unbelievable stories, though. Like unbelievable. I mean, stories. you can look on what, the what internet. Is your, what does your friend Malcolm say? <laughs> I got a buddy who went on Yacht Week with a couple of Brazilians. Yeah, they uh, they're rabbits. I've heard. Yeah. Didn't they used to? What was it? The Miss Bum Bum competition that they used to run. I don't don't act like don't act like. Yeah, what was that thing? Yeah, <laughs> those great what tight asses yeah. all over the internet. Back What's the dancing the dancing game show like American Idol? I think Chief Miss Bum Bum. No, 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 no. So it was, it's like dance? Miss America for asses. Uh, maybe that's it. What I forget. About? I forget exactly what show it was. But if if you type in like, I think it's Brazil. It might be Argentina. Maybe some South American country. But I think it's Brazil. It's like Brazil's. So you think you can dance or something? Type of that into google and it's basically full blown pornography and with like the hottest girls of all time okay. no, i gotta find it i'll get it to the audience after we finish recording thank That's you right. thank you not safe for work disclo disclosure on it? it's as not safe for work as you can possibly get without quite being not safe for work hey speaking of porn brian kelly took a huge facial yesterday <laughs> from a reporter that was a good transition Brilliant. i'll give you that much uh, i loved it fuck brian kelly i want to like brian kelly so much because of him Why? doing uh notre dame dirty like that just bouncing on him last you know without telling anybody I fucking hate this guy. He's the worst. He, he's he's tough. He's the such a prick. I'm so glad I don't have to defend him anymore. I can't, he never did. I he can't think. The truth. I can't think of a least likable guy. Human. You know, right now. like do you know what his background was originally before he got into coaching? <laughs> I can't wait to hear. So, Capital sure punishment. He was, he was <laughs> a, a Massachusetts uh, politician. Like that was his path, and then he went into coaching. Like you got to drop at a Division three school in Massachusetts, and like the rest is history. But like he is a politician, and you know I think he's used to. I think the SEC media is probably a little bit different than what he was used to the last year at Notre Dame or before that at Cincinnati. So if you're going to be a cocksucker and you lose, you're gonna you're gonna hear about it and be embarrassed publicly. And he embarrassed himself publicly almost nonstop since he took that job. The Southern accent thing, like he's just the fucking worst PR and I, nightmare yeah for, and I, and i for that program down there right and he was like personality wise probably a pretty good fit at notre dame yeah and, did, and he did a great job he's not a fit down there mm -mm. and i think his margin for error like I'm, you know he got a big contract and but like if he doesn't get it going and and when i say get it going like you have to be like a national championship contender at lsu because the last three coaches they've had have won one and two of those coaches were basically complete morons so if you can't get that done down there as brian kelly after you get all the hoopla and all the money you're going to get some backfire losing to florida state in new orleans not 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 a great start for him but is it a great start here's one coach O got a 17 million dollar buyout like maybe brian kelly's on that coach O path where he's like i'll just go down there and get a massive fucking deal yeah just like lose and then be it no whatever be I, disappointing and then just get paid yeah his quote about that what time do you want me to leave what door do you want me to take for for Coach O, like I'll just yeah I'll take that seventeen million. I don't know the parameters, okay, but I think while Coach O was doing some underhanded things down there, and you know, it was not once they won, he was just like a party boy. I think he had a couple of mistresses. Wasn't that the story? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, but he's he's one of theirs. You know, you take care of your own. I don't think Kelly's going to get that. I'm sure he has some clauses written into his deal for a buyout, but I think seventeen million for Coach O. It was just like, hey, man. But isn't Brian like, Kelly's deal like 90-something million? He got, he got fucking crazy money. Yeah. Insane money because Michigan State fucked everything up for everybody. With, with Mel Tucker. With Mel yeah. Tucker. But so you say not quite $17 million. I would bet that it's a shit ton more than that. Cause I don't know what – but, like, who knows what the language of the buyout is. If they, You know, yeah. like, I'm sure he protected himself and I mean, all you that. Look but that up. Is that on spot track? Yeah, check that. Coach O, this is kind of like a hit to football guys everywhere. That coach O just like laid his football guy personality down. I was like, oh, 17 million, 17 yeah. million. Because these are, when you think of coach O, I'm just thinking like, this is a guy who gets up and he just wants to coach O line drills. Yeah. He just wants to bring everybody together. Yeah, uh, but he's also 61. Yeah, it's like, but then again, it's like, yeah. hey, you want 17 million? He's been on the grind for a long time. I'll tell you who's not taking a $17 million buyout. This is not on the list, but Dan Campbell. If you're watching Hard Knocks, that guy would pay $17 million to coach. 
Oh. He would be like, I will give you every dollar I have if I can go coach tomorrow's practice. I'm, he, so, he, I'm so happy that the world is coming around and realizing what a fucking beauty that guy is. I, I don't think is coming around. I think like he came out of his biting kneecaps in his opening press conference. Everyone's like, who the fuck? This guy is amazing. Right, but last season there was still a little like... Oh, he's a football guy jock. It's not going to work. Yeah. yeah, the Lions are Lions, blah, blah, blah. Well, I still, now, I still think that. <laughs> I still think like this is not going to work. It's, do you guys think this is going to work? Yeah, dude, I don't know, man. <laughs> I, do. His, I do too. Like seeing do. his his. Well, coach, I'm watching Hard Knocks too, so of course yeah. it's going to work. Same with me, but his seeing his coaching staff, it's fucking awesome. Like he's it's got all former NFL guys, studs yeah. though. Yeah. Like, like Deuce like, Daly, Aaron Glenn, yeah, 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 yeah. Colin Shepard. Yep. Uh, the fucking quarter or uh, wide receiver. They got Mark Brunell, who I fucking hate. I know that's he's the a one. Dink, but yeah. that's the one that's like. Whoa, 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 yeah, whoa, 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 Who's not like Mark Brunell is a ninety. Six and Madden L one. He was a stud with like eighty four throw frick. power. He was, he was a nasty frick. for the Jags. He was nasty. Didn't he take him to the AFC Championship? Yeah, yeah. I know he's nasty. Yeah. Isn't that cool though? Like a lefty Patri- from Washington like, that's just like kind of just, just, just doing naked boots. I'm talking out. about his. What was he? ES, he was ESPN, right? He sucked on ESPN. Okay. He drove me crazy on ESPN. So he cried, cried about the flip. That's game, right. right. That's like, right. He's yeah. the guy who cried. Oh yeah. yeah. He sucked. Oh, yeah. Fuck okay. So I I don't think the Dan. I. I want it to last as long as it can because I I love Dan Campbell, but I think it's going to be another like they'll go four and thirteen. They'll be as bad as the Bears, and he'll be fired in either this off season or the next. And but they'll play hard and they'll tackle well. Kneecaps, biting kneecaps. Um, but a lot of it, I don't know if you. I've been watching that with the subtitles on because my air conditioner is just so loud. <laughs> so like uh, when you read the words that he says on hard knocks, you're like, that makes no sense. <laughs> but then when you watch it without it and you just listen, you're like, fuck yeah, let's go. But Dude. when you see the words, you're like, this guy, this is not going to work. It's complete. Dude, <laughs> yeah. the clip big cat fucking recorded and posted last night. I was dying. Oh, I haven't seen that one. Oh, yet. it's just him. It's like a minute long clip of Dan Campbell, just staring off into the space. Uh, and just like processing thoughts they, and dance captions, just something along the lines of like Dan Campbell just got hit with the revelation of going through the 17 game schedule. Or yeah, <laughs> he, he processed the entire the entire yeah. like season or whatever. But props to the HBO producers for not clipping that. Tom, as a video guy, if you po- if someone if Carl poses a question to me right now and I sit there and lament on it for like a minute 30. Are you going to include that in the rundown, or are you going to clip that? Yeah, no, I would clip it for, like, a social clip. Yeah. But yeah. the finished yeah. product, it's not. Wait till you see this clip. Yeah, okay. this clip. Normally, you would want to edit that out. Um, he is sitting there, like, deep in thought. <laughs> he's probably looking at his, his too deep, uh, the 53 roster, and he's like, oh, shit. I do think that if I were an NFL owner, I would hire Dan Campbell. He would be like the number one guy to at, at the top of my list for associate head coach. Like you just run around, you say these football guy cliches, <laughs> you yell at people, you tell people how great they are, you have that gravel voice, you lead them out of the tunnel, and then someone else is doing all like the real work. Director morale, like Caleb. Yes, like something like that. And he, but he's motivating guys, and he's having crazy analogies. There's value those guys in that. Kind of they, they're they're oral. It he's fades like, away he is kind of like a Coach O. Oh, yeah. He's like he and Coach O, are, they're, he's like a Southern Dan Campbell's Coach O, where they just talk and they're crazy, and then, but people love them. And, but then it's like when you actually have to game plan against Nick Saban, it goes south real quick. <laughs> so. I think there's something to be said, though, for guys that played, were in the trenches. Totally. And So I watched the two Bills. Yep. 30 for 30 was on this weekend, and mm-hmm. it's just so good that anytime I see it on, I watch it. And hearing LT talk about how when Belichick first came in, nobody fucking paid him any attention, respected him whatsoever because he was a nerd. He never played. Everyone Dink. was like, this guy never fucking played football. Like, yeah. fuck out of here. It took him like five years. Dan Campbell comes in, instant credibility. Yeah. Instant fucking credibility. Yeah, he had a 10-year career. It was a backup tight end, but that, that matters to guys. Until it's like, oh, wait, would I pl- rather play for the guy who is a backup tight end and is telling me to bite people's kneecaps, or would I rather play for the smartest guy in the room? 
probably choose the smartest guy in the room. Would you though? Over Bel- Belichick or Dan Campbell? Think though, you're not you. Mm. You're a, you're an NFL player. You're a jock. You're well, a fucking, I think my number one answer is I'll, a little CTE. whoever whoever pays me the most is who I would play for. Right. Number two Come answer: on, if I want if I want to win, I would choose Belichick. All right, here's a question for you guys. Uh, if you were going to a Major League Baseball game and you wanted to get a ball, would you rather go with Zach Hampel or would you rather go with the guy who stole the ball from the kids last night at the Nationals game? I don't know if you saw this clip. If we could saw show it. this clip. Yep. Uh, it's an amazing clip. There's some girls from a softball team. These girls cannot be any older than nine years old. Uh, there's a group of them. They're passionately hanging over the right field foul pole or right field like railing, throws a ball, throws a ball. Uh, the right fielder throws a ball. And then a, ma- a man, a grown man with a beard and a Juan Soto jersey reaches over at the last second, takes it from the girl. Uh, Zach Hampel is one of the best. Mm-hmm. And Barstool tweeted out Zach Hampel did not like the tweet. The foul ball guy did not like it. It was something like, uh, this guy comes from the Zach Hampel school of hard knocks. He said, you guys are better than this. <laughs> Big Cat, I think it's time we hit up another game together and show everyone how it's done. It's been seven years. The people need it. While on topic, if you haven't watched the Big Cat Zach Hampel video before, I, I mean, the fuck am I? Sox Park. I mean, it's unbelievably yeah. funny. And it's done in such a short format. Did you – film that yeah uh no comment on this okay uh the guy the the guy who steals it from these kids just quick punishment on my end i think public execution is a fair because it's 100 if you're willing to do this and steal balls from like we're just gonna see this guy in the news years later like for just pre-crime crime crime. yeah Yeah. Yeah. what do you what do you think now that talking about hample though if that was a home run ball and you had a team and not just somebody tossing to you to be nice, but you're in the you're in the bleachers and it's a home run ball. Is Zach Campbell oh, or fair, that guy? Fair game. That 100%, it's fair game. Yeah, you, you can bowl those girls over. Yeah, because that it. that whoever the outfielder was throwing it to those girls was throwing it to those girls. Yeah, there was intentionality. There. Yes. Yeah, I I would agree. I think you can knock the shit out of those yeah, girls. Yeah. Oh yeah. They're in the way. Steam like get off yeah. get off the train tracks. I'm yeah. so oh, yeah. I'm so disappointed in you guys. Why? I mean, I've never I've never caught one at a game, and I would I. It, me personally, I wouldn't even leave my seat. Exactly. So yeah. why would you bulldoze girls? You're. I fighting. wouldn't. But if someone else did, I wouldn't fault. It them depends for that. if it's like Barry Bonds number seventy two. Hmm. All right, and that's a huge difference yeah, than I'm, than a exception. Washington Nationals batting practice. Yeah, uh, September. Batting yeah, practice. I mean, there, it doesn't. The only thing lamer than people that care about fucking foul ball, like grown adults that care about foul balls and shit, unless you're gonna give it to your son or your daughter who you're there with or fucking kids sitting next to you are the people that go nuts for the t-shirts that they, the free t-shirts. Oh, yeah. that they uh, that's free worse. t-shirt people are insane. Insane, Field, dude. Field of Dreams game was insane. hosted by the Reds operation staff because the Cubs were away team. So the Reds like bring out their game day. So like the, the not like the vendors and the ushers and stuff, but like yeah, and the pump up the crowd people and in between innings they were doing the exact same stuff they'd be doing at Reds games, and they've got like a T-shirt team. They come out to the Field of Dreams game. These tickets you're paying thousands of dollars to right. be in Dyersville, Iowa mm-hmm. for this right. game. Thousands of dollars, and these people are going fucking bananas for some like generic sponsored by Cincinnati Skyline Chili whatever bullshit. Yeah, huge fucking ads on them like everywhere. You don't even know what size these things are coming out large. It's like, bro, you're 275 Cincinnati rural fucking mongoloid. You you can't be wearing that shirt. What are you doing? T-shirt people are, bro. Now, if it comes from a t-shirt cannon, I think that's a little bit different if you're very high away. What if Excitement for that. But if you're already sitting close enough where like, one of these game day people can throw a t-shirt and you are in a position to catch it and you're willing to get excited about that. I'm gonna put you on the same list as fucking the guy carrying the glove, public execution, same people that spend over a thousand dollars a year on fireworks. I said it. Now I don't <laughs> I don't know if they still have this, but do you remember guys remember when the Bulls used to have like the, the blank? parachute drops? Yeah. Same that's that's what I'm talking about. I that see people, was dude, I see people like fucking fall on ex- top of people. Exhilarating. Dude, ex- what about exhilarating. A I never got one of those. Fly over and then the F sixteen drops T shirts. Oh, I like that. That would be incredible. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, why Soldier you know, Field should not have a, a dome. Promo, man. Yeah. You know who those people are? They're the fu- they're the same people as the fucking people that stand outside the hotels with the binders of pictures Ugh. waiting waiting for the players. To come out, I have some and friends yell at who to sign. dads are like that. Yeah, no shit. They're yeah. the free T-shirt fucking people too. I had a, I was at a wedding. This was in like mid June, and my buddy's dad, who my dad's friends with, I love this guy. I've known him my whole life, and first time I had seen him in a few years, and he was telling me a story of how, oh, 
fuck, who was it? It was actually it was Sandy Koufax. It was Sandy Koufax. He was at some. It was fantasy camp or something. The details don't matter. But uh, Sandy Koufax was in the in the stands watching the game, and he followed him to the bathroom and had a, a index card, like a math high school index card, in his pocket. Acted like he was taking a piss. Waited for Sandy Koufax to wash his hands, and met him outside the bathroom. And I'm like, you didn't need to tell me that. You did not need to tell me. At least he didn't do it in the bathroom. Did he sign? <laughs> Yeah, he did. He did sign it for him. I'm like, it's a fucking signature on an index card. That's yeah, I, I never like understood it. that. Like, Me neither. It's so I fucking have like weird. I have five autographs at home. I do have Muhammad Ali. I got it at a garage sale for 10 bucks, but it's all faded to shit. Ken Griffey Jr. Uh, randomly, I have Bob Feller. My grandma ran in, in, onto him in like Miami or something years he's ago. Some, he's a Hall of Famer. He's some good ones. Um, grandma sleep with Bob Feller? Maybe. Maybe I'm a son. That's why my arm's such a fucking cannon. Man, well, Bob that's, Feller's that's grandson. in question. His now. strikeout rate in, from like his eight when he got back from the war, or in pre-war and then post-war, really sad stuff because his strikeout rate early in his career. I mean, legendary stuff. And then it, and they then said it he could throw like one or two back when nobody threw that. Hard. Nobody like that yeah. was back when like and the strikeout rates were so low. And he'd strike out like 350, and you could get like five starting pitchers from the next team. They wouldn't strike out that much. Mm-hmm. Good call, on Bob Feller. Really yeah, I you. watched uh, facing Nolan. On the plane out to New York this week. Do you have you guys seen that? Uh, I haven't even heard about Nolan it. Ryan. But Nolan if it's Ryan. about Nolan Ryan, I yeah. won't watch it. Yeah, I would say it was pretty good. And they were estimating that they have like technology where they can go back and look at film, and they knew like how off the radar guns because they were kind of preliminary. They said that he he probably topped out at like 107, 108, dude. Like I would fucking preposterous. It's just so I I was talking with some of my tiger friends last week about this and what Verlander's still doing at this point. He's and, gonna win the Cy Young. He's thirty nine years old. But people are blown away at what Verlander's doing, and it's not even close to what Nolan Ryan was doing. He, was, he threw in four different decades. I want to yeah. say, dude, it was. it's bo- it's bonkers. 60, yeah, 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s. And yeah. he yeah. and he had complete games, like double digit complete games, until he retired. Here's a trivia question for you: How many Cy Youngs did he win? Zero. Zero. He, zero. He okay. won no zero. Way. Guess yeah. it wasn't that hard. He's also people say he's also the most overrated pitcher ever. How can that be? Yeah, I don't, because he walked. I the mean, world, if you, the, the, the he was never strategically, the, yeah. I mean, he threw a lot of pitches. They were long, long innings. You know, if you're playing defense behind Nolan Ryan and like he's walked the bases loaded, and then he strikes out two guys, and he's thrown thirty fucking six pitches in that inning, and there hasn't been one ball in play, and now you're playing shortstop, and there's a fucking you low knob or, sleep. like yeah. hit up the middle, and you got to go make a play out oh, of punch shit, and Judy. Oh shit, yeah. That's tough. The uh, the documentary made it seem like he figured out his command, like once he got towards the end of Houston but like he he couldn't start for the Mets because he like not really anyways because he couldn't get the ball over the plate consistently so he came out of the bolt like the 69 miracle Mets and that staff had like everyone mm-hmm. he was like an extra arm and he had like one great start in the World Series and that was it but I do think his legend his legend is as strong as anybody who's played baseball yeah yeah when you say that name you're like, holy shit yeah. like to watch that guy in his prime even though to your point like at every level yeah. There were multiple guys that were like, oh, no, I'd rather have him pitch than Nolan I th- Ryan. I think they said he finished second like six times for the Cy Young. And he had one year where he had like a 2.19 ERA and didn't get it. I mean, He'd probably get a lot more votes if he didn't put all those baseball writers through four and a half hour games. Like, they were probably <laughs> just like, this fucking yeah. guy. And then you go down the road and Vita Blue's out there taking drugs, being like, don't worry about it. I got right? Vita Blue. I got his autograph. I have, um, I have a good trivia question about him. Okay. Oakland A's. I know, but it, it's kind of rever- it's kind of reversed. It's back to Cy Young, only pitcher to win Cy Young in both leagues. That's got to be Pedro, right? Vita Blue. I was Pedro say didn't Vita win Blue. for the Expos. You can't like we were talking about Vita Blue. I know. And that's you said why you have I was, a trivia question, then you asked us a question that answered. Yeah. So I'm but, looking at. That's why but, I thought it was a trick question. No, but on, so that's a good trivia question. But the Cy Young Nolan Ryan one, that's great. I never would have fucking. Guess that he had never won one. That's crazy. I mean, he was he was marginally above you're 500 like, for his career. I, know, I think but, you're getting Pedro confused for winning the Cy Young in his last year with the Expos and then going to the Red Sox, where Maddox won the Cy Young in his last year with the Cubs and then went to the Braves. I think that's a common, like... I think I might have had that twisted open. Now, if you brain. look at Pedro's year before he went to the Red Sox, the fact that the Expos... Yeah. So he Pedro won at 97, 99, and two thousand. So he, what was the last time he pitched for the Mets or the Expos? Like ninety five. I think ninety five. Yeah, yeah, Dan Duquette swindled them, dude. That stretch, 
that four year stretch, I don't think there has, I mean, in my lifetime, never, never been a pitcher like that. Fuck you. Your, your thing is wrong. In 1997, Pedro went 17 and eight for the Expos and he won the Cy Young. So National League Cy Young, wow. and then he went over the American League and won it twice for the Red Sox. Okay. So. Hey, I got a trivia question for you. Can you name two pitchers that have won a Cy Young in both leagues? There you go. <laughs> All right, last topic here. This has been a longer rundown, but I'm, I, I'm not in a position where I don't read these topics. Yep. I don't want to get an email from John Rich being yep. like, yo, dude, I'm going to strangle you. With my He's fucking, our boss now. My fucking chain. Um, shout out John Rich, by the way. I uh, Met his brother. Nice guy. Good yeah, blogger. Just ran into him. We ran him in a tech once. Nice. What? Yeah. He was just there. Yeah. He was like, hey, I'm John Rich. Saturday. Like, really? He's, and we're like, are you serious? And then I tweeted at John Rich. He's like, yeah, that's my brother. Good nice. looking kid. Nice family. Good cheekbones. Yeah. Good rich cheekbones. Mm -hmm. uh, lady got a 100-pound tumor removed from her stomach. I, I don't, don't know if click we can on the show pictures. the pictures don't in this because them. they're published by the New York Post, and yep. they have made a business out of like, hey, use this picture. Oh, fuck, you're fucked. Uh, so we probably can't show these. If you guys did see them by any it's chance, tough. don't don't click. On I just them. clicked. Don't it's, click on. Them. It's one of those things where it's like, how did how did you how did you have that in you? And like, I I hope to God I've got a twenty pound tumor in me, because I can explain the way my body looks right now. I, that's what I want. A, a benign twenty pound thing, because that would make. I saw a picture of myself from twenty twenty, and I didn't even think I was in good shape in twenty twenty way skinnier than right now really yeah so it would be nice to be like oh it's not your fault it's not the fact that you've been a, sl a no, slob a, i saw something it's a tumor chief yeah your health isn't don't I worry about the weight worry gain about your health is yeah. in serious jeopardy though correct but just take it out and then we're then i'm skinny again i saw this thing a high school quarterback i think it was a high school quarterback i gotta look this up um he had to stop playing because they found a tumor in his brain Ooh. turns out he's always had it Turns out it won't get any worse, and it turns out that a lot of people go through their entire lives with brain tumors and don't even realize it. Yep, I had a friend. So we started playing again. He threw for like he's like a big recruit. So <laughs> Northwestern after him. Uh, I do not believe so. Well, get on those message boards. Yeah, I had a friend whose mom had one the size of a lemon in her head, and they went. They had to take it out. It had like major brain surgery, but like she was fine. It was not cancerous, but she had like a, a lemon just sitting in her brain. That's a that's tough. Yeah. yeah. Scary yeah, shit, man. Yeah, the word tumor, you just like mm, yeah. see that word come and turn around and run away. Yep. Hundred pounder in this lady's stomach. That doesn't even freak me out as much as the women that give birth and never knew they were pregnant. That I, does that happen often? Yeah, uh, I that just that one saw where it again. the chick threw her baby week. in like the garbage at prom. Did you ever hear that one? No. Nope. Yeah. Don't want yeah. to. Nah. It was yeah. like a national. But thing. no, I just saw again, New York Post, it's like fucking creature feature uh yeah some woman gave birth to a baby and was like yeah, i had no idea i was pregnant a couple weeks ago i mean there are other medical signs that would indicate that you're probably pregnant dude way more signs than having a tumor in you yeah right you should probably know that you should probably be like hey i haven't had a period in six months might want to get that checked out i had drinks with a gynecologist a couple weeks ago i was like can i ask you some questions he was like yeah I just started asking questions fascinating Nothing I want to share publicly. We'll just uh, just an interesting professional out there. Yep. So I would. Uh, I, can, I didn't have to share that. But. No, I, I'm interested to hear off off air. I've been trying to get my buddy, the urologist, to come on the show for forever. And he's just like, ah, I don't know. Imagine fucking just looking at dicks all day. He used to send me life. like I would be in like my, my he would be like at some seminar. And he would, I'd be in like a meeting and I'd pull up my phone and be a text from, from my buddy. And I look and it'd be like this, the most disgusting, like sliced open dick you've ever seen. And he just did it because he thought it was funny to like fuck with me. But and you could charge a lot if you're a dick guy, right? Because. Oh, that's why he chose it. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's the most like, I need to get my dick checked out. Yeah. Well, like does. I'll walk around with a bad ACL. <laughs> yeah. Right, but right? It, like, yeah, but they do like your bladder and your lower. They do all sorts of shit. It's just not just like your that, dick. the nether regions. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which yeah, again, yeah, that's that's high, you know. Yeah, that's not the oil change going off. That's but, like you absolutely are taking the fucking. Does he car perform yeah. vasectomies? Oh yeah. Oh, that yeah. is like that's something that just the word just makes yeah. me fucking yeah, want yeah, to yeah, curl yeah, to yeah, the fetal position. When he, I remember where I was. No offense to when anyone he that's had explained. One what the procedure is and i like it still makes my like i feel like i drank in curdled milk when Here, i all right it. since you have some kind of expertise on this i'm going to ask you a question i i've, I I've been too afraid to ask 
Till now. Yeah. Are you ready? I think I know what you're going to ask, and I've always had the same question. I've always been too afraid to ask. How do they reverse it? Should we call them? Yeah. So this fucking this rundown's gone. A long one, here, I boys. I think they just nod up and the best end with a urologist, it and will... then they like untie it like a shoe. Well, okay, ch- but here's the thing. Uh, all right, okay. but here's the thing. If they aren't removing anything and they're just tying your tubes, yeah, are you just building up all this fucking cum and like? I, where does it go? Maybe. Where's... I hope he's not like in surgery right now. Is semen production? Yeah. You cough it up. <laughs> what? No. Shut up. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> I, I, that's not what I was gonna ask. Do you still come? Yeah, you shoot blanks. Just no like you still come. Yeah, you still right. Like all the yeah, all the goo. All, all your boys stay home, but you still have uh, the goo. Jacket. Really? Yeah. What do you that's think? That's what I was gonna ask. I had no idea. I didn't. And I, I was always too afraid to ask. Can that. I tell you something? I I might have just made that up. I don't know for sure. I think a lot of this has been made up. I yeah. think a lot of things that have well, been Well, he didn't fucking answer, up. so he uh, better be saving somebody. He better well, be removing a tumor right now. Otherwise, he's in deep shit. Stitching somebody's tubes back together. This yep. has been the rundown. Today's Wednesday, September 7th. We'll be back next week, um, provided we're invited back next week. Uh, <laughs> oh, that was good. <laughs> this one. <laughs> it was all right. A uh, good raw dog. Dante, fuck you. You got a good head of hair. You put the hat back on. Thank you to Sport Clips. Yep. Uh, we'll see you guys next week.